Crucial D is finally back in print and I could not be more excited than I am. So of course I had to celebrate this momentous occasion with a video where I'm gonna be doing an overview of the new Omnibus editions from Kadansha as well as giving an explanation to anyone that is new to the series about what Initial D is, what it's about, and why it is so popular. Why do I love the series so much? Hopefully, with this video, I can turn a lot of new readers onto this series. A, because it is a, it's an amazing series. It has a fantastic story and great characters, and I just love the fact that now it is widely available for readers here in the US to pick up and try out for themselves. But secondly, because something like this, a reprint of a classic title, from Kadansha. If this succeeds, we might see more classic Kadansha titles, more things that have been stuck in their digital vault. See the light of day and get physical releases, like maybe Beck Mongolian Chop Squad, which was also never completely published in English, similar to Initial D. Anyway, let's get into talking about what Initial D is, what is this series, what is it about. Uh, this series was published by Kadansha in their Seinen Magazine, Weekly Young Magazine, from 1995 until 2013. After the series ended, later in 2017, a sequel would be launched titled MF Ghost, whose second season of its anime has just been announced. The Initial D manga was uh, very successful, ran for uh, 48 total volumes, only 33 of which were ever published in English by Tokyo Pop before they lost the licenses to all their Kodansha titles. It also led towards uh, anime adaptation, which I believe was six seasons long, several movies, both animated and live action. Um, There's also video games, arcade games, tons of merch, and I believe as of 2021, it sold like 55 million copies. Uh, so it is extremely popular. It is an iconic series in Japan and it is very popular around the rest of the world as well. I'm hoping that a lot of new readers will come from the U.S. with Kadansha's new release. The series itself focuses on high schooler Takumi Fujiwara, and Takumi could not care less about cars or street racing or any of this stuff, which is ironic because everyone around him seems to be a little obsessed with it, including his best friend, Itsuki. Itsuki, at the beginning of the series, is excitedly showing Takumi this catalog of cars and talking about what he wants to buy with the money that he's going to save up so that he can start doing some street racing himself. And uh, so he starts showing him this car and then he's like, I really want to buy this 8.6, this 8.6, and Takami has no idea what he's talking about. So they go to work, they both work at a local gas station, and they meet up with their co-worker, Ikatani, who happens to be the leader of a local street racing gang called the Akina Speed Stars. Akina being the mountain in the area that has treacherous turns all the way down that a lot of these street racers will go down. So they're talking and, you know, Itsuki's bringing up the car that he wants to buy to Ikatani, saying, hey, I'm going to buy this 8.6, I'm going to save some money and buy it, and then I'm going to, you know, learn some skills and I'm going to, you know, I can I can race with you. I could I could be part of the Akina Speed Stars. Ikatani's not really paying much mind to this, but the owner of the gas station pops out and he's been listening to the conversation. He's like, hey, you know who the best racer, the best driver in the area is? It's not any of you street racers, no one in your gang or anything like that. It's the delivery driver for the local tofu restaurant. And Ikatani's like, what are you talking about? And he's like, what, you've never seen this guy driving? He's He is professional in the way he drives, just immaculately down the mountain around every single turn, making every drift perfectly. And uh, so they talk about it, and eventually Ikatani and the gas station owner make a bet, and he says, you know, if you can beat this guy in a race, I'll give you, I think it was like 100,000 yen or something like that. And he's like, bet, I'm gonna, I will beat this guy. And the owner takes the bet because he knows, you know, he's not as good of a driver as this delivery driver. So they make the bet and the gas station owner calls up the owner of the uh, tofu shop and he says something about like, hey, you know, you know the, the, that 8.6 that you drive doing deliveries and he's like, oh, I don't drive the, the 8.6. I don't do the deliveries anymore. He's like, what? Who's doing the deliveries for you? And the tofu shop owner is like, oh, well, for the past five years, my son has been doing them. I taught him how to drive so that he can make all of the deliveries for us. And this blows the dude's mind, the uh, gas station owner's mind. Turns out that the son of the uh, tofu shop owner is, of course, Takumi. It is the Fujiwara Tofu Shop. So Takumi's father for years, for the past five years, has been teaching Takumi all of these skills, all of these uh, techniques for driving that in Takumi's mind are just things that he needs to know to do his job because he needs to drive fast so that the food doesn't get cold or anything like that. He needs to drive with precision around each one of those turns so that he doesn't spill anything. So he has learned all of these skills that street racers 
no, without knowing it has anything to do with street racing. And thus begins the story of Takumi Fujiwara, the boy who had no interest in cars or street racing whatsoever, who goes on to become one of the best street racers. So with that description of the series, let's go ahead and take a look at the new Omnibus editions. Uh, and then after looking at those, I'm going to talk a little bit about my own feelings on the series and why I love Initial D so much. All right, here we have all three covers of Initial D Omnibus Volume 1. Uh, this one over here is the standard cover. This one is the one available at both the Crunchyroll store and it's also for the, the direct market, which means uh, local comic shops or online comic shops such as In Stock Trades are going to have this one as well. And then this is the Kinokuniya Exclusive Edition. Now the Kinokuniya Exclusive Edition also comes with this exclusive shikishi board um, that is signed not actually signed but you know signed by the creator um, this comes free with the purchase of the item at your local kinokuniya of course you can get a 10 percent discount if you have a membership at kinokuniya um, and if yours is like mine they have this packed inside uh, with the book so when you grab it, you will get a, a shikishi board. Anyway, so the first two I was able to get on Crunchyroll. They had both of those a little bit early. I ordered them. They came in last night. Uh, today is Tuesday, the official release date. They came in last night on Monday, and I drove out to Kinokuniya to grab this one. My local uh, Kinokuniya is the Katy, Texas. That's the closest location to me. Um, the guys over there were super nice. Uh, shout out to them. I believe Joel and Zeke were the names of the guys that I talked to. If I got any names wrong, I apologize profusely, but both of you were very cool, and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys again in the near future. Um, they were both very excited about this release as well, which is great to see, and it sounds like they might have some cool events going on at that Kino, so maybe check with your local Kino to see if they're gonna be doing any similar events there. Uh, now, let's take a look at these, uh, you know, not just the covers, but the spines and the back covers. So, as you can see, there's not much to see here. The spines of all three versions of Volume 1 are exactly the same. They are red with the white stripe down the middle, the title, the creator's name, the volume number, and the Kadansha logo at the bottom of the spine. And each of them are the same width as well, which I only mention because I remember back when the Tokyo Revengers variant at uh, Barnes & Noble came out that either the variant was thinner than the regular edition or the regular edition was thinner than the variant, even though they had the same page count, so they just used thinner paper. Now let's take a look at the back covers. So here you can see that the regular and the uh, DM slash country roll, crunchy roll variant are exactly the same. There's no difference here. Um, it might look like it's a little bit taller. It's just the way that the, the book opens and stuff, but they, I, I assure you that they are the same uh, width. But these two are the exact same. The exact same on the back. There's nothing to signify um, that I've noticed. Nothing to signify the uh, different edition, that it's the DM slash Crunchyroll variant, but the Kino one, of course, has Kino Kinia's name at the bottom, and as well, they changed these to green instead of being that lighter orange color, like on the other two covers. So that's the main difference between these three books, aside from the front cover, is that the back cover of the Kino one does look a little bit different. So no matter which one you get, they're all going to look the same on your shelf if you display it spine out, but they are going to look, uh, the covers, of course, are going to be different. Now, what I'm I'm not saying this is what's going to happen, but I'm, what I'm thinking might happen or I'm hoping might happen is that future volumes are going to have different colors, like it might be white stripe in the middle of blue, white stripe in the middle of yellow, uh, different things for different volumes. I, I don't know, we'll see what happens soon enough, but let's take a look inside the book itself. So all three are the same on the inside. We start out with some colored pages, and I didn't mention this, but it's got a cover price of $22.99. Uh, for two volumes worth of material. This first volume is uh, over 450 pages long. You can see the table of contents goes through. It has the first 21 chapters as well as a bonus comic and translation notes, uh, the translation notes starting on page 450. The first several pages are in color. So we start out with some great colored pages in here. And then after the colored pages, starting off the story, I absolutely love this one. Uh, it goes back to black and white 
and then after a couple black and white pages it goes to the regular newsprint type paper and we get that paper for the rest of the volume so that is the uh, the colored material in there that's the table of contents now let's take a look from the back at any of the extras and stuff that are included in this volume so after the last page uh, we get the little preview to be continued for omnibus volume 2 there's the little bonus comic at the end, so just some little uh, omake material, basically. And then we get into the translator's notes, uh, starting off with a page explaining the honorifics, and then a bunch of different uh, notes about uh, different things that show up throughout the series, like 8-6, and it's stuff not just about um, you know, Japanese culture and whatnot, which you get from commonly from these uh, translators notes, but also about cars and about racing. So explaining things like a hairpin turn and inertia drift, um, different, you know, four wheel drift, uh, explain things that, that you wouldn't know if you're not familiar with cars. So if you're reading this and you're confused about what some of these terminologies mean, you can go straight to the back of the book, not just for the, you know, Japanese cultural references, but also for translation notes about the racing terms and about car terms, which I think is actually really fantastic. We have some more notes, uh, Michael Schumacher, Wastegate, Takashi Clinic, uh, different things that you might want to know about what gets brought up, e-brakes. Uh, so they really explain everything just in case you are completely oblivious to anything to do with cars and racing whatsoever. Which again, I think is really great because while this is a seinen manga and is rated for you know older teen audiences, it is one that I could see a lot of younger audiences picking up, audiences of people who don't yet have a license or older people who never learned how to drive for one reason or another. Um, you know, this is great for them because they might not have any idea what stuff means like an e-brake. And then we get to the end of the translator's notes and it goes towards ad pages for a few different of uh, Kodansha's manga that are being published right now. And then of course the Indicia page with all of the publication information, uh, both from Kodansha Japan and Kodansha US. Uh, so you get all that information of who we have to thank for this edition of the manga. All right, so I hope that that overview of the Initial D Omnibus was helpful to many of you. Maybe you've been on the fence and seeing that could help you make your decision one way or the other if you want to pick it up or not. But for all of you who are still on the fence, now I want to give some thoughts about the series and why I love it so much. So hopefully this can kind of nudge you in the, the correct direction. Um, Initial D like any great sports manga, is fantastic whether or not you care about the subject matter. And I honestly, like Takumi at the beginning of the series, could not care less about cars or street racing at all. I probably could care a little bit less now, but at the time when I first started reading it, I really couldn't care. And in fact, I avoided reading or watching this series for years because I couldn't imagine a series about street racing being interesting to me whatsoever. But over time, the more and more sports manga that I exposed myself to, the more I realized that any subject can be great. Any series can be great regardless of the subject matter. It all depends on the characters and the writing. And so one day with nothing else to watch, I decided to put on the first season of the anime and I was immediately engrossed. I could not pull away. Just like when I started reading Slam Dunk, I could not put the volumes down. I could not pull away from watching the first season of Initial D. The characters are fantastic, the story was fantastic, and the way that they just put everything forth to where it's easy for anyone to understand these basic topics about cars and street racing that people might not get. But it didn't make me feel dumb. It, held my hand in the like most seamless way possible into understanding things about street racing alongside Takumi, who, while he is a very talented uh, driver at the beginning of the series, he knows nothing about racing. He knows nothing about the sport and doesn't care about it. But he learns about this stuff as he goes on through the series, and I learned along with him. Takumi is a fantastic character for so many reasons, and this series is fantastic for so many as well. Um, I, I think that it just, it's about the youthful drive to accomplish your goals, something that is common in so many different series. Um, but just seeing a character push themselves to the limit 
um, to achieve those goals and how well that's portrayed with Takumi in this series and seeing the character grow uh, throughout his career, uh, growing from someone who doesn't care about this at all to being one of the best is fantastic. And I, I cannot gush enough about how much I love this series. Now, I, I don't know if that saying what I did was something worth saying or maybe it meant nothing at all, but I, I don't know. I'm hoping that that connected and you understand why I, I love the series so much. And if you are still on the fence, hopefully those words can push you to at least try out the first volume or maybe try out the anime and watch a few episodes of the first season. If you watch the anime, then you get to hear all the excellent Eurobeat music that is synonymous with the series at this point. Um, so that's all I got. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, thank you so much. I'm hoping this was helpful and you enjoyed it enough that you'll consider hitting the subscribe button um, and you'll be notified for all the upcoming videos that I put out every like uh, every week or so. And if you're not new here, then you know how much I appreciate each and every one of you every time you tune in to uh, check out one of my videos. Thank you for spending time with me and I will see all of you on the next one. Peace out.